بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته برضس so uh, we reached um, the lesson about the different types of worship and some of the examples that the Sheikh was going through um, last week in last week's lesson, the previous lesson. So uh, we'll go in order in uh, with regards to uh, how it was mentioned. So you can see that uh, it started off with Khawf. So we'll start with Khawf. And the Sheikh, he says, he says, Al-Khawf no min anwa al-ibadati wa huwa ibadatu وهو إبادة قلبية وكذلك الخوف والخشية والرغبة والرهبة والرجاء وتوكل كل هذه إبادات قلبية. So he starts with الخوف, fear, and he says that this is a type from the types of worship, and this worship has mentioned last week as well that this type of worship is with regards that's connected to the heart. And he says, and like that, fear uh, and having awe and and uh, having this desire to carry out an act of obedience, for example, uh, and the opposite of that, uh, and just um, hoping for something and trusting, hoping and trusting as well. He says all of this uh, is connected to the worship of the heart, as in the what the heart, the actions of the heart. So the actions of the heart that are connected to worship. So he says, the Sheikh, he says, so he says, as you can see uh, at the top of the page uh, in the bolden text above the uh, horizontal line, it says, وَدَلِيلُ الْخَوْفِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ So that's an ayah uh, for the evidence from the Quran. That's an ayah from Surah to, uh, Ali Imran, verse 175. And so if you, if you go to verse 175 and have a look at the translation, inshallah, with the meanings, it says, it is only shaitan that suggests to you the fear of his awliya, supporters and friends, polytheists, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah. And it is messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi so fear them not, but fear me, if you are true believers. And you can refer back that to yourselves as well. If you, if you need to read it again. So the Shaykh, he says, وَالْخَوْفُ هُوَ تَوَقَّعَ الْمَكْرُوهُ وَهُوَ نَوْعًا So he says, fear is when uh, when some when you expect uh, something of dislike to occur or it happens. And he says it's of two types, which we'll understand a bit further, inshallah, when he explains it. He says it's of two types. So fear is of two types. He says, خَوْفُ الْإِبَادَةِ وَالْخَوْفُ الْتَبِيعِي So he says, there's a fear of a uh, fear that's that's um that's connected to worship there's fear that constitutes worship and there's fear that's a natural type of fear and he'll go on to explain it so he explains the first one he says and no al awwal khawful ibadatu hadha sarfu li ghayri Allah sarfu li ghayri Allah says khawful says khawful ibadatu hadha sarfuhu li ghayri Allah shirk وَذَلِكَ بِأَنْ يَخَافَ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ فِيمَا لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ كَأَنْ يَخَافَ أَحَدًا أَنْ يُمْرِضُهُ أَنْ يُمْرِضَهُ أَوْ أَنْ يُقْبِضَ رُوحَهُ أَوْ يُمِيتَ وَلَدَهُ كَمَا يَفْعَلُ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ مِنَ الْجُهَالِ كَمَا يَفْعَلُ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْجُهَالِ يَخَافُونَ عَلَى حَمْلِ زَوْجَاتِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أُولَادِهِمْ مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَخَافُونَ مِنَ السَّحَرَ أَوْ مِنَ الْمَوْتَ فَيَعْمَلُونَ عَمَالًا شِرْكِيًا 
لأجل أن يتخلصوا من هذا الخوف فهذا لا يقدر عليه إلا الله الأمراض والموت والرزق وقطع الأجل هذه أمور هذه أمور لا يقدر عليها إلا الله عز وجل وكذلك إنزال البركة أو غير ذلك هذه أمور لا تكون لا تكون إلا من الله عز وجل فإذا خاف أحدا في شيء لا يقدر عليه إلا الله فهذا شرك أكبر So let's just stop there for a second <clears throat> and go back here. So then the Sheikh, he says, so the first type, and that's khawf al-ibadah, is the khawf that is, constitutes worship. And he says, he says, this, if, uh, this, if it is directed towards other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is shirk. It is polytheism. He says, and that, and that is, For example, he says, that is because you, because um, uh, somebody um, fears other than Allah in that which that person is not capable of except Allah. So uh, he gives some examples of that. He says, for example, uh, fearing somebody that he will make you ill and make you sick, like he has a power to make you sick, or he's able to... Um, Uh, you know, take your life. Uh, is able to uh, kill your ch- has power to kill your child, as in like give them bring death to them. Um, or, or as the Sheikh says, as many of the people, many of the ignorant people do, that they fear upon, for example, uh, their pregnant wives that they carrying the fetus, and they fear. Uh, upon their, you know, of their children from the jinn, for example, the fear of them from the jinn, that the jinn might do something to them or that the um, uh, the magicians the sahirun, the sahara, the magicians may be able to do something affect them, or um, you know, from from death or, uh, and, and so what they do is to prevent that from occurring because of their ignorant beliefs they, uh perform, they act out of certain types of actions which are shirk. They commit shirk in order to uh, free themselves and to, to save themselves from uh, from these things that they believe in. And, and that's the, in, the original thing is this fear. Uh, so then the Sheikh, he says that none but Allah is capable of all of these examples. So Allah is the one who brings about Somebody you can make them, you can cure them, or you can make them sick. You know, you take, Allah gives life and takes it. You know, all of these things I mentioned that, that these are these are things that only Allah is capable of. Nobody else is capable of this, and so that's the reason why, as we are all brothers, we will we'll understand this. That that's why when somebody does that and directs that towards other than Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that is shirk akbar. So the Sheikh mentions, like, for example, you know, sicknesses, types of sickness, you know, death, uh, provisions, risk, um, and and your life ending, for example, Qatul Ajal and your life ending or, you know, ending your life. These affairs, Allah is only capable of of doing and, and doing these affairs. Nobody else is capable of, the, of uh, executing these. And uh, it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can do that. And the Sheikh says, and likewise, for example, um, you know, sending down blessings, that's all, Allah is only capable of blessing. Right? Uh, and other than that, the Sheikh says, these are affairs uh, that are only, that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, can, can you know, execute. Is, nobody else can do this. No, nobody from the creation can do this. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, فَإِذَا خَافَ أَحَدْ فِي شَيْءٍ لَا يَقْدِرَ لَيْهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَهَذَا شَيْرِكَ أَكْبَرَ So then the Sheikh says, so if somebody fears uh, something else that isn't capable of, or clearly isn't capable of these, of course it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of what we discussed, then this person falls into the greater shirk. It take, as we all know, it takes the person out of the fold of Islam and whatever good deeds that he had, they get erased. 
because the Shaykh says لِأَنَّهُ صَرْفْ نَوْءٌ مِنْ أَنْوَاءِ الْإِبَادَةِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ يَزَ وَجَلْ Because obviously the person's directed uh, 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 type uh, some of some of the worship that's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they've, 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 they've directed it and shared that with somebody else from the creation which obviously falls into shirk Then the Shaykh says كَالَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ مِنَ الْكُبُورِ وَمِنَ الْأَذْرِحَ وَمِنَ الْجِنِّ وَمِنَ الشَّيَاطِينَ أَن تَمَسَّهُمْ بسوء أو أن تنزل بهم ضررا فيذهبون يتقربون إلى هذه الأشياء لدفع ضررها أو خوفا منها هذا شرك أكبر يقول أخاف إن لم أذبح له أن يصيبني أو يصيب أولادي أو مالي أو ما أشبه ذلك كما قال قوم هود إن نقول إلا اعتراك بعض آلهتنا بسوء يهددونه بآليتهم ويخافونه بآليتهم قال إني أشهد الله وأشهد أني بريء مما تشركون من دونه فكيدوني جميعا ثم لا تنذرون إني توكلت على الله ربي وربكم سورة هود بس 54-56 هذا هو التوحيد تحدهم كلهم هم وآليتهم so then let's just finish that paragraph. Huh? So then the Sheikh he says he says he says also like those who fear the uh, the fear um you know the graves and and they have fear of uh, of the um of the um, tombs for example or shrines uh fr- from the jinn and from the shayateen uh, that they may um touch them with some form of evil and cause them uh, you know uh, cause them, uh, uh, you know, touch them with evil and cause them problems. Uh, for example, the Sheikh says, and that because of that, they they fear that they may be harmed. So because of that, because of that fear of harm from the jinn and the shayateen, uh, that these pe- people, what they do is they go, um, and they 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 go and they try to get close to these things. These uh, whatever they fear, other than, from other than Allah, the, the other things that they fear is mentioned here, and they, and in order so that they can push away the harms and the fear of it. And the Sheikh says this is Shirk Akbar, that this is the greatest Shirk. <clears throat> and uh, and he says here, he says uh, uh, like for example, one of them may say, <clears throat> excuse me, one of them may say, I fear, <clears throat> I fear. That if I don't um, sacrifice, make a sacrifice, that I be affected, you know, I may be harmed, my children may be harmed, my wealth may be harmed, and things of that sort. As uh, as the people of the uh, as the people of Hud, Salam said, and we read the Quran ayah. So so let's um, uh, go to the translations of those. So that was in. Uh, let, let me find the uh, reference here, inshallah. Hud, Surat Hud, verse 54 to 56, as we mentioned. All that we say is that some of our God's false deities have seized you with evil madness, he said. I call Allah to witness and bear you witness that I am free from that which you ascribe as partners in worship. With him, Allah, so plot against me, all of you, and give me no respite. So then, these are the ayahs from, uh, from Surat Hud, as we read the two ayahs. And the Sheikh says that they were obviously threatened, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hud alayhi salam, the people of Hud threatened him with their false deities that, you know, they're going to bring harm upon him. So he says, so he challenges them and he says, okay, then I challenge you to that. As we read in the, in the, in the ayah there, that's a challenge to them. So then the Sheikh says, and they're trying to obviously scare him and bring fear into him uh, by way of their false deities. So. Uh, and, and, and then obviously then the response from Hud alayhi salam is you know uh, so plot against me all of you and give me a response before that says he says that he says that I'm free from that which you ascribe as partners in worship with him Allah so plot against me all of you and give me no respite and this is the Tawheed here Tawheed clear Tawheed here and the Sheikh says this is Tawheed that's challenging all of them to bring about what they said but they will never be able to do it and they never did. Because these deities and all these other things, 
that we've mentioned so far, they can't do anything. They're powerless. So then, uh, so then the Sheikh mentions um, this ayah here. He says, "Fakiduni jami'an thumma la tundirun." Uh, and then, so so plot against me. So who says to them, "Plot against me, all of you, and give me no respite." He challenges them, and the Sheikh he says, "Wala tumahiluni, bal min al-an fakiduni, wa lam yaktiru alayhi bi shayin, bal nasrahu Allah alayhim." So then, obviously, who the Nabi Salam challenged them, and uh, and the system, don't be easy on me. Bring that uh, plot against me. Bring that whatever you said. Bring it upon me. But obviously, they they're not capable of doing anything because this is what only Allah is capable of doing these sort of things, as we mentioned earlier on. And so uh, Allah uh, helped him and um, uh, aided him upon them. Yeah. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, فَالَّذِي يَخَافُ مِنْ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ فِي مَا لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ هَذَا يَكُونُ قَدْ أَشْرَكَ الشِّرْكَ الْأَكْبَرِ وَهَذَا يُسَمَّ خَوْفُ الْإِبَادَةِ وَخَوْفَ الشِّرْكِ كَثِيرٌ فِي النَّاسِ يَخَافُونَ مِنَ الْقُبُورِ أَوْ مِنَ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ يَخَافُونَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ يَخَافُونَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَلِذَلِكَ يَقُومُونَ بِتَكْدِيمِ الْقُرُبَاتِ لَهُمْ يُقَدِّمُونَ لَهُمْ الغبائح والنضور والأطعمة وغير ذلك كإلقاء النقود على أضرحتهم من أجل أن يسلموا أو من أجل أن يسلموا من شرهم أو ينالوا من خيرهم فهذا هو خوف الإبادة. so then the sheikh finishes off that first type of خوف which is خوف الإبادة as we have been talking about he says so he says those who fear in that which only Allah is capable of doing or executing, then this, this person, he, as we mentioned earlier, he falls into shirk akbar. He falls into the greater shirk which takes him out of the fold of Islam and he raises all his deeds, his good deeds, they get wiped out. And the Sheikh says, and, and this is called khawfa ibadah. So, so, so this Khawfa that we're talking about in this uh, section of the book is Khawfa Ibad as he mentioned and he says that a lot of people fall into this type of shirk they for example as he mentioned earlier as well he gives another example he says he reminds us he says that they fear from the likes of the graves and from the so-called awliya um, they fear from the shaitan and they fear from the jinn uh, they, they're fearful of the jinn well, and for that reason what they do is to combat that fear what they do is they they bring things they try to get close to these things that they fear <clears throat> even though they're not able they're not capable of bringing about any kind of harm or anything they 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 for example they sacrifice for them they'll make oaths with them they'll bring food and all sorts of these things uh, and these are just some examples not exhaustive list and for example, they'll also like um, throw money and you know put money around the shrines uh, in order that they are uh, protected and that the, the evil uh, that these these things that they're doing this for they protect them from any evil and that they don't obtain or come across any kind of evil doesn't fall upon them. And also on the opposite, that so that uh, if evil doesn't fall upon them, that that they also can maybe get some goodness from these people. So they're seeking blessings as well from these people and as we mentioned earlier on and we've seen the, uh, uh, the ayah that we read from Surah Al-Ma'idah that, that Allah is the one who blesses nobody else blesses it's Allah is the one who sends blessings right so this is Shirk Al-Akbar as other Sheikh mentioned a few times so far so then we move on to um, uh, the second type and so the Sheikh the second type of fear and <clears throat> the Sheikh he says so he says the second type of fear is the is the natural fear. So this is the natural fear that that we that we uh, uh, you know um, uh, feel uh, in a particular situation. He's going to give some examples so we can understand and contrast and compare between the two types. So he says, وَهُوَ أَن تَخَافَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ ظَاهِرٍ يَقْدِرُ عَلَى مَا تَخَافُهُ مِنْهُ كَأَن تَخَافَ مِنَ الْحِيَّةِ من الحية أو الأقرب أو من العدو عدوي هذه 
هذه أمور ظاهرة ومعروفة فالخوف منها لا يسمى شركا هذا خوف طبيعي من شيء ظاهر معروف لأنك تخاف لأنك تخاف من سبب من سبب ظاهر ومطلوب ومطلوب الوقاية منه والحذر منه تأخذ السلاح تأخذ العصا لقتل الحية والأقرب وقتل السبع لأن لأن هذه أمور محسوسة وفيها ضرر معلوم فإذا خفت فإذا فإذا خفت منها فإذا خفت منها فهذا لا يسمى شركا بل يسمى خوفا طبيعيا ولهذا قال الله في موسى عليه السلام فخرج منها خائفا أي من البلد خائفا خائفا يترقب خائفا من عدائه لأن لأنه قتل منهم نفسا so then um, the sheikh he says with regards to the natural fear and he says that this is that you fear of a thing which is apparent that you see that is apparent and that it is capable of causing harm in that which you fear from it or of it like you fear a serpent or a adder a snake or a scorpion or an enemy an enemy of yours these affairs are apparent and are well known and so the fear of them is not called shirk is not called shirk it's not shirk this fear is natural from a thing that is apparent and is, is known because you fear from the uh, from uh, uh, what's apparent and what can occur from that and, and you obviously uh, you seek uh, a barrier between that from uh, b- between you and that so it doesn't happen or to avoid it for example you know you stay away from it as well and we'll give some examples obviously we we'll give some examples there like a snake biting you you know a scorpion may sting you enemy may harm you hit you you know uh, so you pick up a weapon or you pick up something to aid you you know it may be a stick as well you know to kill the serpent or the um, the scorpion uh, or a predator etc because he goes these affairs are something that are felt you know they felt you know they're there you can see them you can feel them and the the harm is known i mean you get get bit by a snake the potential is death same thing with a scorpion you know, if you don't get treated so you know you avoid these things they're real they're there and you know you can deal with them your you know and and those things that can cause you harm they're capable of actually causing you that kind of harm and so the sheikh says so, so this is not classed as shirk uh, rather it is a uh, uh, fear that's natural and then he says and that's that's why uh, allah azza wa jal uh, said regarding musa alayhi salam we read the ayah from surah al qasas verse 21 so let's go to surah al qasas verse 21 and read the meaning of the ayah so so it says so he escaped from there looking about in a state of fear he said my lord save me from the people who are polytheists and wrongdoers so the sheikh says that that he says that you know he feared and he, he, he was escaped from that that land and he was looking around in fear because they, they were able to harm him so he was fear from his enemies he was a fear he was in fear from those enemies because he because he killed uh, one of them there and that's a story they can refer back to uh, with by looking at the quran uh, uh, for more detail but that's just an example of evidence there in terms of enemies yeah enemies that is natural fear of an enemy harming you so then the sheikh says wa harba alayya wa wa haraba alayhi salatu wa salam ila madyan wa kana yatarqa wa yakhsha an yulhiqu أن يلقي أن يلقي أن يلحقوهم فهذا خوف طبيعي لكن تعلم الإنسان أن يعتصم بالله عز وجل ويأخذ بالأسباب التي تدفع عنه الضرر ويعتمد على الله عز وجل ويتوكل الله قال قال تعالى قال تعالى فلا تخافوهم وخافوني إن كنتم مؤمنين هذه الآية في سورة آل إمران في قصة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مع المشركين يوم أحد لما توعدهم المشركون وقالوا 
نرجو إليهم ونستأصلهم فالله جل وعلا يقول إنما ذلك الشيطان يخوف أولياءه فلا تخافوهم وخافوني إن كنتم مؤمنين أي أن أن هذا التهديد وهذا الوعيد إنما هو من الشيطان أي يخوفكم أولياءه أو أو يخوف من من انقاد له من الناس وخاف منه فإنه يتسلط عليهم. So then <coughs> excuse me the sheikh he says so uh, in the ayah that we read earlier uh, in Surah Al-Qasas about Musa alayhi salam then uh, Musa alayhi salam he ran he escaped from there uh, and he went to Madian and you know he was looking around in fear that he may be attacked uh, by his enemies and that they might catch up to him so this is a natural fear that you know we all would fear and that an enemy could uh, harm you of course but you uh, also in, uh, that people learn and they know that that in these situations that they they firm they hold firm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know they hold firm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal uh, and they take the means the the means to uh, prevent and push away these harms and that they depend and trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they put their trust and their dependence uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said when we mentioned the ayah earlier on as well فَلَا تَخَافُهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ so don't uh, uh, fear them so don't fear them but fear me if you truly believe or are believers yeah Surah Al Imran. We read this earlier on in the start of the lesson. Yeah. Um, so then the Sheikh says that this ayah, uh, it, it, it's in Surah Al Imran, which we read. It's it's in the story about the Prophet Sallallahu with the Mushrikeen, the polytheists, uh, and the day of Uhud, uh, when they said the the polytheists, the Mushrikun of Quraysh, they said they threatened, uh, 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 they threatened uh, the the Prophet and the Muslims, and they said we're going to return. And we're going to return and we're going to uh, basically rip you apart and, and kill you and destroy you. Uh, and, and then Allah subhanahu Allah Jalla wa ala says, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ So let's go back to the ayah and just remind ourselves. Surah Al-Imran verse 175. So if you read the whole ayah again, it is only shaitan that suggests to you the fear of his awliya, supporters and friends, these disbelievers in the oneness of Allah and in his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so fear them not but fear me if you are true believers so then the shaykh he says i.e. what does that mean he says that you know that these threats and uh, trying to terrorize the Muslims and these uh, threats that they are just they're from the shaitan that they, they're trying to fear you know cause fear uh, and make you fearful um, uh, and to make you submit and you know to make you feel small and you know uh, and the likes of that and that you fear them, but the uh, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that don't fear them, fear me, if you truly are believers. Yeah. So then the Sheikh continues and um, he says, "Qawluhu Taala man kana yarju." So now we uh, we finish that topic of fear. We're going to move on to a raja, uh, a hope. So if we go to the top of the page here, a raja wa daliluhu. So the Sheikh says, "Al-Raja wa Daliluhu wa Dalilu Raja." قوله تعالى فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا. سورة الكهف. Last verse in Surah Al-Kahf. So Al-Raja, when he said this, Al-Raja is hope, having hope, and uh, it's a it's it's a, it's the worship that's connected to the heart. It's, it occurs in the heart, yeah. And um, uh, this is mentioned after fear. So if we go to Surah Al-Kahf, last verse, what does it say? Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am only a man like you. It has been inspired to me that your ilah, God, is one ilah, God is one God, i.e. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So whoever hopes, so whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, let him work righteousness and associate none as a partner in the worship of his Lord. So that's clear there. So there's a mentioning of hope. And so the Sheikh he says, Qawluhu Ta'ala man kana yarju. So he's going to explain to us the ayah now. He says, So Qawluhu Ta'ala man kana yarju. Ya'ni yatma'u fi thawabillahi azza wa jal wa 
رؤيته آيانا يوم القيامة من كان يتمع في أن يرى الله آيانا يوم القيامة فليعمل عملا صالحا يأتي بسبب الذي يؤهله لحصول هذا المطلوب وهو ثواب بدخول الجنة ونجاة من النار والنظر إلى وجه الله لأن هذا متلازم لأن من دخل الجنة فإنه يرى الله عز وجل فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا هذا يدل على أن الرجاء وحده لا يكفي لا بد من العمل أما أن أما أنك ترجو الله ولكنك لا تعمل فهذا تعتير تعتير السبب فالرجاء المحمود هو الذي يكون معه عمل صالح أما الرجاء غير المحمود فهو الرجاء الذي ليس معه عمل صالح والعمل الصالح ما توفر فيه شرطان So let's stop there for a second So the sheikh he says So he's breaking down now and explaining to us uh, the ayah that we read from uh, the last ayah of Surah Al-Kahf. He says, so he mentions, he says, Qawlu ta'ala, the, the saying of Allah, man kana yarju. He says, so whoever uh, hopes, he says, what does that mean? He goes, meaning whoever, you know, wants to taste and hopes for the uh, the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal and the, re- and the reward of, uh, you know, seeing him with his eyes on the day of judgment. Whoever, you know, wishes and hopes and wants in that he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his eyes on the day of judgment for upon him is that he um, uh, works righteous deeds and you know he comes with those uh, with uh, w- he comes with those ways and means that allow him to attain what he seeks as in what we mentioned so the reward so And that is the reward and that he enters Jannah, the reward of entering Jannah and salvation from the hellfire and um, uh, being from the people, the successful ones who see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Sheikh says, says, because entering Jannah, it goes and it's a must, it's mutalazim, because entering Jannah, but indeed then the person who enters Jannah, he will see see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then he mentions the ayah again. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا نِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا So whoever hopes in the meeting of his Lord work righteous deeds. And he says, this demonstrates to us that hope on its own is not sufficient. You can't just hope, hope and hope and hope and not do anything. So the Sheikh says, it's incumbent, it's important and it's a must that we hope, but then we work for it as well, that we put it into action. We have a hope, and then we put it into action. And then he says, for example, that you hope uh, in Allah, you have the hope in Allah, but you do not work for it, then, you know, you are ex- you're already exhausting the possibility of you even executing and reaching that, that goal. Because if you just hope, and then don't act and work for it, you're not going to get it basically. And so the Sheikh says that the praiseworthy hope, the, the, the hope that's classed as praiseworthy, the praiseworthy type of hope, it is when you hope and you do and perform righteous actions and deeds. And he says, other than that, so uh, on the other hand, the flip side, uh, having hope with the, uh, that is not praiseworthy, it is, it is, as we mentioned, uh, having hope without actually doing any actions, just hoping for the sake of it, you're just hoping and not acting upon it. And then he goes on to mention that, um, he says, the righteous deeds, they, ha- they require for righteous deeds for them to be classed as righteous deeds. They require two conditions, or the two conditions need to be met. I think that's probably a better way of saying it. Two conditions need to be met for them to be classed as righteous actions and then accepted. The Sheikh, he says, الأول الإخلاص له عز وجل الثاني المتابعة للرسول So he says, first condition, the first condition is that you, and we mentioned this in previous books as well, if you remember, and the start of this book as well, I think, if I can remember right, that uh, the first condition, it is having sincerity, ikhlas, sincerity for, uh, uh, to Allah Azza wa Jal, that you're sincere to Him. 
that what you do is sincerely, purely for him, right? Secondly, he says, um, following al mutabatu li rasul following the Prophet sallallahu What does it mean? He didn't explain, but uh, we'll summarize it here and then we'll go through through the explanation that. Number one, you are sincere and you do these actions sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not doing it for anybody else. You're doing it for Allah alone. And secondly, that you are doing it in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're doing it in accordance with how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to do it. And these are two requirements for actions to be accepted. If any one of them are missing, is uh, uh, whatever you do is not accepted it goes in vain so then the sheikh he says فَالْعَمَلُ لَا يَكُونُ صَالِحًا إِلَّا إِذَا تُوَفْرَ فِي هَذَانِ الشَّرْطَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ خَالِسًا لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَيْسَ فِي شِرْكٌ وَأَنْ يَكُونَ صَوَابًا عَلَى سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس في بدعة فإذا توفر في شرطان فهو صالح وَإِنْ اِخْتَلَّ فِيهِ شَرْطٌ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ عَمَلًا فَاسِدًا لَا يَنْفَوْ صَاحِبَهُ So, then the shaykh says here, as we mentioned as well, that, um, so for in order for these actions to be accepted, they have to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincerely for Him, and so therefore, you're not shedding any kind of worship, uh, any forms of worship with other than him is all for him and you're sincere in that and then secondly following in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu and following his sunnah and doing it in accordance with what he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so you're not falling into religious innovations bid'ah or anything of this sort and so if you fulfill the conditions then your actions are righteous and they are accepted and otherwise, if you don't, if any one of these conditions are dropped, then your actions are corrupted and they are not accepted. And they don't benefit you. They don't benefit us. So then the Shaykh, he says, فَالْعَمْرُ الَّذِي فِي شِرْكِ يَرُدُ عَلَى صَاحِبْ صاحب uh, يَرُدْ عَلَى صَاحِبِهِ كَذَلِكَ الْعَمْرُ الَّذِي فِيهِ بِدْعَةٌ بِدْعَةٌ يَرُدُ عَلَى صَاحِبِهِ قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد فهذه الآية فيها الرجاء وأنه عبادة الله الزوجل وفيها أن الرجاء لا يصح إلا مع العمل الصالح. so then the sheikh he says he says to us he says that and so actions or when you perform the deeds if there is shirk then those actions are sent back to the person who did them. They go back. They're not accepted. They're rejected. And likewise, if somebody performs a religious innovation, a bid'ah, not, uh, not doing things according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, they're rejected, as mentioned earlier. And so the Shaykh, he mentions a Sahih hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever performs or does a deed uh, that is not from our affair, then it is rejected. It's sent back to him. Meaning that if the if if the Prophet ﷺ is not from the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is not upon the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, then is rejected. Right. So then the Sheikh uh, concludes that paragraph, and so he says that therefore those conditions are fulfilled, and those are classed as amal salih, righteous deeds, and they are accepted. Alhamdulillah. So then we move on to at tawakkul so I think we just have a couple of pages, I believe. Yeah, let's just finish this section, two pages on Tawakkul, and then we'll stop. I think it'll be a good time to stop, inshallah. So then the Shaykh, uh, he says, At-Tawakkul, At-Tawakkul wa daliluhu, wa dalilu tawakkuli, qawluhu ta'ala, wa ala Allahi fatawakkalu in kuntum mu'mineen. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 23. So then the Shaykh starts the next section, and the next type of... Uh, uh, worship that is uh, in the heart and that is a tawakkul it's uh, a trust and it's quite important to pay heed uh, to this uh, because there's some very very important points uh, mentioned here uh, to help us understand inshallah what is actually meant by tawakkul and what it means and some of the things that maybe some people may be confused about and clear them up inshallah so um, the sheikh he 
quotes an ayah, so he cites an ayah, so let's have a look. He says, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 23. Let's go there. Verse 23 says, we'll read the whole ayah. Two men of those who feared Allah and on whom Allah had bestowed His grace, they were Yusha, Joshua, and, and Caleb. Yeah? He said, assault them through the gate for, for when you are in victory will be yours and put your trust in. So this is the bit. And put, and put your trust in Allah if you are believers indeed. So that's the bit. Put your trust in Allah if you are believers in, or if you are indeed believers, true believers. So then the Shaykh, he says, At-tawakulu huwa tafwilu wa li'atimadu ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa tafwilu al-umuri ilayhi subhanahu wa ta'ala hadha huwa tawakul wa huwa min a'adha man wa li'bada wa lihada qala wa ala Allah fatawakulu in kuntum mu'minin qaddam al-jar wa al-majroor ala lamil liyufid al-hasr so then the Shaykh he says, trust at the wakul, trust, it is you depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and putting your affair in his hands. That you put your affair, whatever it is, you put all of your affairs in his hands. It's with him, the affairs are with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you put those affairs with him and you, 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 you send those affairs there for him. You leave him with him, you trust in him. You trust upon him and you depend upon him. He said, the Shaykh says, this is tawakkul. And it is from the greatest types of worship. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah that we read, Wallahi in kuntum mu'minin. So upon Allah, so upon Allah put your trust. If you truly are, indeed, if you truly are believers. Indeed, if you are believers. Yeah. So there's some grammar here. Because it could have been said the other way, fatawakkalu. Allah. So you could you, you could say Fatawakalu Allah and that's fine as well, you know, grammatically. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wa Allah Fatawakalu. Why? Because when it said like this, just like in Surah Al Fatiha, Iya kana abud wa iya kana stain. So because it constricts and it conveys, it puts emphasis on here. Puts emphasis that all of your trust you put it in Allah. All of it. All of your trust, you put it in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not one bit goes somewhere else. All of it goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's how we should be. And that's why in this uh, uh, sentence structure, that's what, what it means. So then the Shaykh says, وَاللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا أَيْ عَلَيْهِ لَا عَلَى غَيْرِهِ ثُمَّ قَالَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ فَجَعَلَ مِنْ شَرْ فَجَعَلَ من شرط الإيمان التوكل على الله سبحانه وتعالى ودل على أن من لم يتوكل على الله فليس بمؤمن فتوكلوا إبادة إبادة عظيمة فالمؤمن دائما يتوكل على الله فيعتمد على الله عز وجل والله من أسمائه الوكيل أي الموكول إليه أمور إباده سبحانه وتعالى فالتوكل لا يكون إلا على الله ولا يجوز أن يقول توكلت على فلان لأن توكل عبادة والعبادة لا تكون إلا لله. So then the Sheikh he says he mentions the ayah the part of the ayah وعلى الله فتوكل one upon Allah you put your trust put your trust i.e. upon Him Allah سبحانه وتعالى and nobody else. Then Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says إن كنتم مؤمنين so Allah is, is made a, a condition of iman that trust is, is is from iman. You know, having iman, for having trust in Allah is a part is part of iman. Is part of our iman, and so it demonstrates that the one who doesn't put his trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that he cannot be a mu'min, he cannot be a believer, and he cannot be have iman. So the one who doesn't put trust in Allah, he, his iman is nullified. So then the Sheikh says, "Fatawakul, uh, fatawakul, it is fatawakul." Trust it is um, a, a great, a mag magnificent type of worship. So the believer always, he puts his trust in Allah and he depends upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And, you know, from, and it's from his names, it's from Allah's names as well, al Wakil. That's one of Allah's names, which is related to what we're talking about now. And that everything depends on him. Everything trusts in him. All the affairs, everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Shaykh says, he says, so trust isn't except 
that you trust upon Allah, that you put your trust on Allah, you put you put your trust in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not it's not um, permissible uh, that uh, it it said, for example, that it one says, for example, oh I I put my trust in uh, Fulan, such and such a person. Because trust is worship and worship isn't directed except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all worship is directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's clear so then the shaykh he says أَمَّا إِذَا أَسْنَدْتَ إِلَىٰ أَهَدْ مِنَ الْخَلْكِ تَصَرُّفًا فَهَذَا لَا يُسَمَّا تَوَكُّلًا إِنَّمَا يُسَمَّا تَوْكِيلًا وَالْوِكَالَ مَعْرُوفَةٌ أَنَّكَ تُوَكِّلْ أَحَدًا يَقْذِ لَكَ هَاجَ وَقَدْ وَكَّلَ النَّبِيُّ مِن من من ينوبون عنه في بعض الأعمال فالتوكيل غير التوكل فالتوكل إبادة ولا تكون إلا لله ولا يجوز أن تقول توكلت على فلان وإنما تقول وكلت فلانا. so this is quite important thing to now need to note the difference. so the sheikh says so if you kind of ascribe to a person uh, uh, an affair whatever that affair may be that isn't classed as trust, putting trust in that person, like as in the trust that, uh, which we described earlier in the previous paragraph. In rather, it is something that they call tawkil that you've you've uh, entrusted. It's not you entrusted, you entrusted, or you entrusted, which is different to trust. So it says, well, wikala ma'rufa. It says, and this al wikala, as they call it in Arabic, al wikala, um, or you have. You know, uh, like an agent for you, somebody who does something for you. You've asked them to do something, and and they're in, they're acting in agency, yeah. And it's well known, and it's well known. For example, uh, I'll give you an example uh, of my own actually. So when uh, uh, me and Wasim were in Egypt, uh, brother Wasim were in Egypt. We were studying Arabic there, for example, and uh, I needed some help uh, from uh, the caretaker of of the building. Every building has a caretaker, and so uh, I entrusted him. Uh, that he takes some papers to um, um, uh, to uh, uh, a building or a, a government building where they uh, give you a, a stamp of approval for renting an apartment, for example. Uh, and so, you see, it was entrusted with that to carry out a task. But I didn't uh, uh, put my trust in him. I entrusted him to do something. Yeah, so there's a difference. Inshallah, so hopefully that's clear. And so there's uh, many examples of this, and there's also examples of the Prophet when uh, you know some of his companions where he entrusted some of his companions to carry out certain tasks. So this isn't classed as tawakkul, and it's 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 actually a tawkil. It's a different, yeah, that you entrusted and made somebody an agent for you to carry out a certain task, yeah. And and it's not that you put your trust in someone, uh, all of your trust in someone, no. So there's a difference. So the Sheikh he says, "Wa ma hada anta tawakkiluhu wa la tatawakkul alay aw tatawakkul alay wa inna ma tatawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa taala fala hadu al farq bain al amraini al tawakkul wa tawkil." So then the Sheikh says, "So so like that. So with that uh, or with this, then you entrusted the person to do something, but you didn't put your trust in him. You entrusted him to carry out a task." So rather and and in so there, therefore, uh, oh, it says rather than uh, uh, that in that situation you tr- put all your trust in Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So he says, notice, take notice of the difference between the two affairs. One is of trust, and one is of uh, entrusting somebody with something to carry out a task. Yeah. So hopefully, Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh has explained that very clearly. And hopefully that's clear from my translation as well, insha'Allah. So then the Shaykh, finally, last paragraph, he says, وَمِن صِفَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَا ذَكَرُوا اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِقَوْلِهِ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانٌ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ هذه من صفات المؤمنين. فتوكل إبادة عظيمة لا تكون إلا لله إلا لله عز وجل لأنه هو القادر على كل شيء فهو المالك لكل شيء وهو الذي يقدر أن يحقق لك مطلوبك أما المخلوق فإنه قد لا يقدر أن يحقق لك مطلوبك فإنك توكله في قضاء شيء من الأمور 
لكن تتوكلوا على الله في حصول ذلك الشيء so then the shaykh he just explains this and I, what I will do is I will read out the ayah um, from Surah Al-Anfal verse 2 let's read the whole ayah first because it will help us understand straight away what's going on so um, let's read the whole ayah the believers are only those who when Allah is mentioned feel a fear in their hearts and when his verses this Quran are recited unto them they i.e. the verses increase their faith and they put their trust in their Lord alone alone so then the shaykh, he basically summarizes here, he says, so therefore that we put our trust in Allah, but we entrust someone, for example, to carry out a task, because in that situation, a person, sometimes he's capable of doing it, and other times he won't be capable of doing it. And so we put all of our trust in Allah, that that he allows this person, for example, to, to, to carry out that task successfully, or that you put your trust in Allah, all of it, so that, that that affair is of, is disposed of, right? Because uh, uh, in situations, you know, like as mentioned, the Sheikh has mentioned as well that somebody might do might try to do something or carry out a task and, and it'll fail. So therefore, we put our trust in Allah because the affair in is Allah's hand, and we put all of our trust, as Allah mentioned in the ayah there, we put all of our trust in Him, right? And then finally. He says, ثُمَّ أَيْدًا لِنَعْلَمَ أَنَّ التَّوَكُّلَ لَا يُنَافِي الْأَخْذِ بِالْأَسْبَابِ فَيَجْمَعَ الْمُسْلِمْ بَيْنَ التَّوَكُّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَالْأَخْذِ بِالْأَسْبَابِ وَلَا تُنَافِي بَيْنَهُمَا فَأَنْتَ تَعْمُلَ الْأَسْبَابَ الَّتِي أُمِرْتَ بِعْمِلِهَا وَلَكِنْ لَا تَعْتَمِدْ عَلَى الْأَسْبَابِ وَإِنَّمَا تَعْتَمِدْ عَلَى اللَّهِ بل بل اعتمد على الله في نم نمو هذا الزرع وتثميره وحمايته وإصلاحه ولهذا يقول أفرأيتم ما تحرثون أنتم تزرعونه أم نحن الزارعون سودان الشيخ يسأل فزارع الحقيق هو الله أما أنت فقد فألت سبب من فقد قد ينتج هذا الزرع وينبت وقد لا ينتج أو ينتج وإذا نبت قد يصلح وقد لا يصلح قد يصاب بآفة فيذهب. So then the Sheikh he says finally um, that that when we put our trust all of our trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala we don't just sit there and do nothing that we take the ways and means as the Sheikh Ali explained so we take the ways and means to be able to uh, attain or uh, attain uh, uh, or whatever that might be. So uh, by way of acting and carrying out the commandments, for example, the Sheikh says that, of course, you know, we depend and trust, uh, put all our trust and all dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for example, if you were um, growing something like you were planting plantation, you're growing something uh, on a patch of farmland, for example, on the land, uh, then you're taking the uh, the uh, the way, the ways and means as in you are sowing the seeds, etc., you know, you're watering the seeds, etc. However, uh, you, you you don't put your trust in that land or or, or in the, your technique. You don't put your trust in you sowing the seeds in yourself or in that. You don't put your trust in that, but you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of it. Right? And and uh, that, that Allah allows that to grow and to flourish and to obviously, uh, you know, come into fruition. Uh, and that is protected, and that is always rectified as the plant grows, and it gives fruits later. So then the Sheikh uh, uh, quotes this final ayah, and then we'll conclude the lesson. He, it is from Surah Al-Waqiyah. So let's go to Surah Al-Waqiyah, verse 63 to 64. Tell me, the seed that you sow in the ground, is it you that make it grow? Or are we the one who makes it? Are we the ones who make it grow? Are we the one who makes it grow? So, so that's clear. That's what the Sheikhs told us, and that's clear from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala was mentioned. And so the Sheikh says, the in reality, the one who makes it grow is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He is the one who makes it grow. And all you've done is taken the ways and means only. So sometimes, maybe sometimes it will produce and come into fruition what you, uh, the seeds that you sowed, and other times it may not develop and it may become corrupt, and sometimes it will be uh, become corrupt, and other times, you know, it, it will be upright and it will develop, but 
that's because all of the, the actual affair it returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's in control of that situation. As mentioned, as the Sheikh said, that the, 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 the real, uh, one, the real, uh, the, the, the one who, the one who actually makes it grow and the one who sows and everything, the, the one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reality. So, uh, we'll stop there. But, but as the point being made here that, uh, um, you, you take the ways and means. The ways and means that are there, you take the ways and means. You don't just, just stand there and do nothing. You take the ways and means, but you put all of your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, inshallah, we'll conclude there and then we'll continue, uh, uh, for the, we'll finish this part of the lesson, inshallah, next week. Um, uh, ta'ala. Subhanakullahu wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa tawbu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.